What's up, everybody? Before we get into this next episode with Draymond Green, I want to remind everybody to go pre-order my book with Tomorrow's On Promise, releasing September 14th. You don't want to miss this story, I promise. What's up, everybody, and welcome uh, to What's In Your Glass. I'm, I'm your host, as you know, Carmelo Anthony. Before we get going, uh, let's first welcome today's guest. Uh, you know him as a um, three-time NBA champion, uh, two-time Olympic gold medalist, uh, three-time NBA All-Star, um, and I, I like to say uh, a key piece of the Golden State Warriors, not the team, but the franchise. Uh, on, on today's show, um, before we get what we're drinking, I want to introduce one of my close friends, one of my brothers, man. Uh, please welcome to the show, Draymond Green. Day Day, welcome. Welcome to What's in Your Glass, my brother. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate it. I, what's happening? Ain't nothing, man. Ain't nothing. I had to. I had to give you the proper introduction. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to give you the same most stale as introduction. So I had to give you a proper introduction. Um, on, I on, on. I come, coming from a legend like yourself, <laughs> I appreciate. It. Indeed. On, on, on today's show, uh, I'm drinking. Uh, I don't know what you're drinking over there. I'm drinking. I went. I went back to Portland, um, 2016 Antica Terra, which is one of my favorite uh, pinots out of out of Portland. So. Uh, I don't know what you drink. What you got over there in your glass? Uh, I am drinking a 2014 Burgundy Clos de Bezier. Cheers, salute. I ain't got to say no. I ain't got to say no more about that. Salute. <laughs> Cheers. Now that we, now that we got that out the way, we let's let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into. Uh, you just you just finished the Olympics. Uh, congratulations, by the way, on the, on the gold medal for sure. I know, Thank I know, you. I know how hard I know how hard that shit was over there, especially during these times. <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> I, I already know. I, I watched it, but summer some summer is kind of summer is winding down, and, and we we gearing up for another season. Uh, now that you now that you like had some time to reflect on it, what what was the experience like winning the gold medal this time around as opposed to say 2016? I think honestly, this time um, it felt more special to me personally, and the reason it it felt more special is in 2016, um, you know, and me having the opportunity to play on that team with y'all. Like we knew we was winning, and you know, you had the experience, K had the experience, you know, like, and then for the most part. I think I was maybe the youngest, I was 26. You know, mm -hmm. like we had a, a very experienced group. Going to Tokyo, I never had a doubt that we would win, but we've also probably had a face doubt of losing like that until and since 2004, you know, of where the world is expecting us to lose, you're hearing all the talk, and then we all know what's going on. And the only Olympic experience was me and Kay. Right. And, and that's essentially just K, because I didn't play much in 2016. And so with all of that going on, everybody counting us out, doubting us, feeling like the whole world, including America, is against us. That, to overcome all of that and actually win, and then to also actually play and contribute and have to play well in order to win. In 2016, I didn't... If I did play, I didn't have to play well, and most of the time I didn't play. So to have to play well in order for us to win, it made it feel a little more personal to me. Absolutely. I, I, I got that same experience from, you mentioned 2004. 04, we was up against the same shit. Like, no, you know, everybody was saying we was going to lose. It was like everybody wanted us to lose. Mm -hmm. So when we get over there and you dealing with what you're dealing with and just that, that whole experience, and you lose on top of that, it just validated what everybody else was was thinking and saying and wanted and wanted to happen. But not just from oh, yeah. the U.S. Though I'm talking about from the world, because at, at that point the world felt like they had caught up to us as, from a basketball standpoint, and we just took a couple mm -hmm. steps backwards. But it was a lot of things going on, you know, between 2000, 02, 04, that that we had to put that type of team together. We shouldn't have lost, but we did. And I, I just, I'm saying that my point is, I know that experience. I know, I know your mindset that you had in this 2000, 2020, uh, 21 Olympics, because I was watching. 
I never doubted that you guys was going to lose. I knew we was going to win. But to hear all the hate and all the doubters, when we had the, we still got the best players in the world. On the, Absolutely. On the, on the biggest stage in the world. So for, to hear all of that other shit about doubting and who's going to play what and know these players not supposed to be, whatever happened, I just take my hat off to y'all because that shit was hard. Like it was, it was hard for y'all to go over there and, and, and win that. Was that... Was 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 this experience um, was was it unique? And I think you hit on it a little bit. Was it unique or strange? Uh, knowing after some early kind of just slip ups, I, I say slip ups. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or you know, working the kinks out. You know, you you almost had you know some media folks rooting against you. What you did? Uh, yeah. Did the, did the team feel that that type of you know that kind of attention? Uh, we we definitely felt it. You know, um, after that first game, we had a meeting. And it was just players only and, and talking about what we felt we needed to do. Like aside from what the coaches felt, aside what anybody was saying, what did we feel like we needed to do? And then um, after that meeting, it's kind of like it was kind of the OK for everybody to just be themselves. You know what I'm saying? But normally we have a four or five weeks to prepare. We had two weeks. Fast. From the start of camp to, to the first game, it wasn't much time to really figure that out. And then especially with Book, Drew, and Chris coming in the night of the game, we ain't had time to figure nothing out. And so when we lost that first game, it felt like it felt like the world was ended. <laughs> because like France had France France beat the world championship team in 2019 and although none of us play on that team you still hear that and you still feel that when you're a part of team usa Absolutely. and so when they be, when they beat us the first game you hear everybody talking how how much the world has caught up to the united states and we can't do this and we can't do that it's now kd's time to lead and he can't do it you hear all the noise but we knew like Yo, we blew that fucking game. Like, right. and if this is what y'all, we, like, we're we're playing that game and we feeling like, yeah, they not even that good. Australia is better, and and so we knew if we corrected some things and we just played our brand of basketball as opposed to trying to be guys that we're not. Like, yo, if you drive and, and kick it, and if somebody cut you off, kick the ball. If you drive and nobody don't cut you off, JT go score. Like. We don't need you playing like you're a role player on any team. Everybody be exactly who you are. That's what makes us better than everybody. And so we knew after that game, like if we locked in and we did these few things, we was gonna beat the hell out of everybody. And which and which and which y'all did though. Y'all y'all did that. And again, you 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 hit on it. Usually we have four to six weeks to lock in and get ready. Y'all had y'all had about 15, 14 days, 13 <laughs> days to get ready. But also y'all had guys coming and going too. You know, you had guys in yep. the in the in the finals who was, you know, three guys who was coming over. Then you had guys leaving for whatever reason, c- protocol, COVID, whatever. So y'all had to implement those new guys as well. So y'all didn't have that much time. And I, I don't think a lot of people understand how much time it takes. To put a to put a team together to go over there and play for the Olympics and and, and to mm-hmm. win a gold medal, that should take a long time. And I have been on both sides. I've been on the side where we put together a team in in nine days, and then I've been together when we put together a team for years, right? And yeah. it, you you see the difference. And the people don't understand a lot of these teams or these countries. They've been together since they was sixteen. Hell yeah, you know, they've been together forever, playing 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 together and playing in these games. So it's just a testament of, for one, where we at as from a skill and talent level. And we still are the best basketball players in the world because we go out Absolutely. there and we showcase. And no matter how no matter how much time we get, we're gonna figure it out. And I, I always knew you guys, well, we was gonna figure it out the way that the way that we did. What was it what what was it like? I know after the gold medal, uh T B hit you, right? Tom, Tom Brady called. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what what what, what what was that phone call like? So it's funny because he DM'd me first. He DM'd me and he like, yo, congrats. Like, let's fucking go. <laughs> and I'm looking at like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, Kate's sitting next to me. 
you know, over there in Asia that you got that long back row. Like absolutely. So I'm on the right side, K on the left side. I'm like, I'm like, yo, Brady just hit me. <laughs> he like what? FaceTime you. So I hit him. I'm like, yo, appreciate it. Hey, the all the fellas like the fellas want to FaceTime you. I sent my number. He called in ten seconds. I'm like, yo, he really calling. <laughs> so we hop on the FaceTime and I'm talking to him. And then I pass the phone to Kay. And now you know, <laughs> I think we all feel the same way. Brady, he a goat, man. I don't care where you are. No yeah, matter. Like, he a goat. Probably the goat. But, and so we all kind of having that same reaction, like, dog. So then Kay take the phone. And Dollar sitting in front of me. Dollar take the phone. <laughs> and Bam take the phone. Zach, before you know it, twelve of us have been on Facetime. Like, yo, right? I think book. It was book idea. Like, oh, I'm about to screenshot it. <laughs> so they, <laughs> so book takes a screenshot. Now everybody who didn't talk to him, like, yo, hand me that back. Hit yeah, they back. sick. They <laughs> sick. They was sick. Everybody get the screenshot, but they was all on my phone. So I posted. But they they kept asking me, like, yo. Send the screenshot. So I posted my <laughs> shit. Then I sent them theirs. <laughs> Yo, well, hold up. But it ain't is no better feeling than than w- being in that position. You know, winning the goal, and you getting a call. You getting an unexpected call from somebody like that. There's no there's no better feeling. Like you said, I don't care where we at as from a stature standpoint. What we accomplished when you when you got certain people that hit you up. That 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 puts you over the top. You know what I'm saying? That gives you a different feeling. That gives you give you a different excitement. So no, it, it definitely does. And you know, for us and being over there, I'm gonna tell you a few things along these exact exact lines. Number one, to get that call from Brady after accomplishing that, and to like feel that support and that love, that should make it all worth it. You know, because you, as you know, doing the Olympics is a sacrifice, man. A huge mm. sacrifice. And so that makes it all feel worth it. I'm gonna tell you another thing that I saw as soon as we won, and it it lit me. It, it really like it made me really happy. And that was your tweet. Absolutely. To know that you know what I'm saying to see your tweet, like after we had won it, like bro, ain't nobody done for, in USA basketball history what you've done. Like K obviously just passed the scoring, but like. You, you you really the go to that shit. And to see your tweet after everything that everybody was saying about us, that shit meant a lot. And lastly, along those same lines, I bumped into D-Wade a couple weeks ago, and so I'm going to share this with you. Obviously, I know that's your brother, but also because me and him talked about it. Mm-hmm. I said, yo, I, I got to tell you, like, after you was one of the people on, on my go-at list <laughs> after we won, because, and I'm going to tell you why. I said, <laughs> D, when we was over there, it felt like us literally against the world, including America. Right. I said, and to see your tweet after all the shit France was talking and you say good luck to Rudy Gobert, I ain't like that shit. I said, and I <laughs> screenshotted it. And I was going to go at you. I said, but out of my respect for you, I couldn't go at you. But I said, if I saw you, I was going to tell you. And so this is me telling you if I wanted to go at you. <laughs> but I couldn't do it out of my respect for you. But I, but those three things, bro, they really stuck with me. Your tweet, Brady call, and then D Wade talking about some good luck to Rudy Gobert. I'm like, fuck that. I know you. Hey, he pay, he paying him, pay him now. That, you know he he paying him now. So you know you know you know how that shit go. Hey, I know how it goes. But I'm like, man, you was over here in these trenches just like us. You know how this feels. So I'm like, nah, I couldn't do it. <laughs> nah, that's 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 crazy. What? So hold up. Are, are, are Michigan and, and Michigan State grads are supposed to speak? Or, like, how does that work? Man, honestly. It I don't matter. Of, you said fuck it, it don't I, matter. No, I, a lot of people feel that way. I don't. Some of my closest friends went to Michigan. Okay. Some of my mentors went to Michigan. <laughs> and if you can fucking talk to Brady, you talk to Brady. So it don't matter. So it don't matter. It came down, it came down to who Brady was, who he is. Hey, hey, you know, if you Duke in North Carolina, Ohio State, it don't matter. If you can talk to Brady, you talk to Brady. That's tough. I ain't talking to nobody from Georgetown, champ. I'm just letting you know that. Georgetown and Syracuse rivals? A big time. Uh, I didn't even know that. Because <laughs> you're, you're the Big Ten. That's why, man. Ain't that shit don't have yeah. 
I can't talk no college shit to you, man. You got nah, I can't talk to you about college, man. <laughs> no, no, we, we ain't gonna go. That's, that's for another day. Football is almost here, and there's no better place to get in on the action than with DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. As the season is quickly approaching, DraftKings is your one-stop shop to make it rain all season long. To bring you even closer to the action, DraftKings is giving all new players a free shot at a million dollars during week one. If you haven't tried DraftKings yet, preseason is the perfect time to test your strategy. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Nothing adds to the excitement of watching the game quite like having a free shot at a huge cash prizes. And while you're perfecting your daily fantasy skills, don't forget to check out DraftKings free-to-play pools where there's even more cash up for grabs. Head to the app now. Download the DraftKings app now and use code GLASS. For a limited time, new players can get a free shot at a million dollars during week one. Don't miss out on the action. Enter code GLASS to get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes with your first deposit. That's code GLASS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. So let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's talk about something else, man. Um, of, of, of course, we, we got to talk about your Bleach Report show, Chips, uh, and, and your, your recent interview with, with KD. You know, I, I, me personally, I think we need more of that. Like, we need more of that, you know, sitting down, man to man, take the gloves off. You tell me how you feel. I tell you how I feel. And we move on. We hug it out and we move on. I think a lot of times we we, we forget that part of life. You know, we get into this, our, our, our respective sports. We start competing against each other. We might say some shit about each other here and there. but And, and then it keeps going. It, it mm-hmm. goes on and carries on. And forever, we never get a chance to sit down with, with that person that we got into and, and have a real man-to-man conversation. So I want to take my hat off to you for, for if, if you came up with that show, that's a hell of a show. That's a hell of a concept. So congratulations with that. Thank but, you, bro. But, I appreciate it. Absolutely. But but for, for for the very few people, you know, left who who still haven't seen it, because I've seen it. Could you explain a little bit about how the conversation just came to be? Because I, I, I know I know the history. I know I'm in the, we in it. You know, we we this mm-hmm. is a fraternity, so we know what's going on. But the outside world don't really know or have an idea what what's going on, what happened, uh, and what transpired. So how did that conversation came to be? Um, how did the conversation, the blow up, come to be, or how did the conversation? No, 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 I, not 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 the blow oh, up. Not, there, we know, yeah, we we are not the blow up. Like I said, that's why I said we in the fraternity, so we know that part oh, of facts. It. Uh-huh. how did how did the how did that conversation come to be because that had to take that had to take a lot of ego and a lot of pride to set aside to say okay yo we me and you need to sit down and have a conversation on camera at that yeah no i think um obviously i wanted to do it i thought it would be great um especially in trying to build a show but also like you know we go through this shit in, in a, a huge part of the reason we get paid the money we get paid is because people care about what goes on amongst us. And so that was a big deal. You know, we were in the midst of trying to build a dynasty uh, finals run. And that was one of like the biggest headlines of that entire run. So everybody want to know about it. I would love to have that conversation on camera, but ultimately it's not my decision. You know what I'm saying? And, and since, since the entire thing happened, anything that happens with that ultimately is not my decision. It's ultimately Kay's decision. And the reason it is Kay's decision is because, A, that's my brother. Like, and no matter what, like, when we got into it that day, once once that moment was over, I'm past the moment now. But it's but in that situation, it, it's not up to me to be past the moment, which is why ultimately all, everything that happens from that situation is ultimately up to him. And I think one of the reasons we could we could reconcile our relationship and and get back close and have a relationship again is because I did approach it that way. You know, I didn't approach it like, oh shit, I'm ready to talk to you. Well, you know, I didn't approach it as like, can you say some wild shit to me as you know, like, and the shit just ain't never blew up like that. But that's just, you know, shit happens. But I didn't approach it like, oh, well, you've talked to me crazy before and I ain't act like this, so now it's time for you to like, nah, this is on your terms. You know what I'm saying? You you feel disrespected, 
you felt like I crossed the line, because you feel disrespected as a brother, that shit bothers me to my core. But out of respect and out of love for you, whenever you're ready to have a conversation, if that's today, if that's tomorrow, if it's never, I got to respect that out of my love for you. And so ultimately, all the conversations that we've had are on his terms. You know what I'm saying? I think there was a time period of where he wasn't trying to say nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I think there was a time period where my number might have been blocked from his phone. I think, you know, I, there was a time period where I could only talk to him through Instagram DM. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't never hear him on no, like, damn, you got a new number or, yo, did you block me? If I can only talk to you on Instagram DM, then that's where I'm going to talk to you at. Because ultimately, it's your decision on whatever terms we're going to be on. The terms I want to be on is that you my brother, I love you, I got nothing but love for you, and we can continue to build our relationship. But if that's where if that's not where you at, I had to respect that. Absolutely. And so then we and so we had the conversation of and we did uh we did throughout the pandemic, I did I went on his pod, he hit me on Instagram DM, like, yo, come on the podcast. <laughs> come on, first of all, KD, you gotta stop that shit, man. You keep <laughs> keep hitting us up on, on Instagram DMs, bro. Come on, man. He hit me like, yo, come on the podcast. Say no more. I'm in. You want me on the podcast? Nigga, I'm there. And we had a little bit of the conversation, but we didn't go as in-depth. And I think the reason we didn't go as in-depth is because he hosts the podcast with Eddie. And Eddie, I think they do a good job. Eddie does a great job of getting Kay to talk, which is not always the easiest thing to do. I think they got a great thing. But in that situation, they're still a middleman. Facts. And because they're still a middleman, you don't know exact what exact questions to ask because you weren't in the moment. So for us to, and so I'm sitting there and I'm like, damn, I'm doing chips. Me and Kay should do it because if me and Kay do it, that's literally just us sitting in a room, how me and him still to this day will sit in the room and talk. And we know what to say to each other because we know all the facts. Someone else may only know bits and pieces like, oh, you know to ask this question, but you don't quite know where that could have come from. We know everything. And so let's just sit down having a conversation I thought would be dope. And I asked him like, yo, I'm doing chips. Would you would you would you come on there? He was like, hell, yeah, I come on. I would love to come. on." There. And so he agreed to it. And then, you know, we got it all set up through his team and my team. And and we sat down and we did it at USA. We did it in Vegas. It was right. It was. <laughs> When we did it, it felt like like it felt right. You know what right. I'm saying? That shit felt amazing. And, you know, I, I like I told him, I was very appreciative of him coming on and having that conversation because as you know, we live in a very opinionated public opinion world and especially the lives that we live to where that's still tough for him to be like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna come on there and talk to you about this in front of everybody. And, and so I was very appreciative of him. And I was even more appreciative. Like, he asked me all while we was in Tokyo, like, yo, when the interview coming out? When that shit dropping? Like, <laughs> yeah, because he got it. that. No, because he probably felt like he got it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that was a burden. Even though he, even, I mean, I don't know that. But I'm just saying, when you when you rock with somebody, right, and we go we go through whatever we go through, and we 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 split. We go to, you go your way, I go my way. We don't talk. We ain't doing none of that. I'm still holding on to that burden. I'm still holding on to that because you my man at the end of the day. I w right. maybe the timing is not right, but eventually we going eventually we going to get there, which leads to which leads to my next question. Why 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 do you believe that like now was the right was the right time to publicly not not just talk but publicly, you know, speak to each other. Uh you know, at, at this this is a a much anticipated conversation. Like this this conversation could have been had in your in, in your living room, in your kitchen, in, in in the backyard, wherever, just between two men. Forget two basketball mm -hmm. players, two men. Y'all could have y'all could have handled that y'all that way. Why you felt like the time was was now that you that y'all had to put this on camera and get this out to the world? I think I think we're both in uh, much better spaces than we were before. Um, you know, he's had now a year of playing basketball and being off the Achilles injury two years away from the Warriors. You know, I've I've had two fucking tough years. I mean, really one miserable year. And then last year was cool. You know what I'm saying? Steph was back. We kind of did our thing a little bit. And so that was cool. But 
through that, I think over the course of those two years, number one, we both grew as men. And through the growth as men, you realize, like, yeah, I cannot talk to him. And, you know, I think we all do this, and it's kind of, you know, along the lines of what you were saying earlier. Like, we could easily say, yeah, I, I'm not going to talk to him. And, you know, his life going to go on and my life going to go on. And, and that's cool. But the reality is, is do I really not want to talk to Katie? Nah, like that's my brother. We've done some special shit together. But even beyond us winning the championship together, I love that. I, I got nothing but love for that brother. Like I love that, man. That's my brother. And so, like I'll, when, when, when you had a type of relationship that I have with him, I, like I ride for you. And so I don't not want to talk to you. And I think it's the same thing, vice versa. Like, yeah, I can, I'm Kevin Durant. I can continue on and not say a word to you. But I, do I really not want to talk to you? Because at the end of the day, one thing I do know is he got my back. For sure. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> for sure. In, in life. You know what I'm saying? Not just no, on no basketball shit like in life. I know if something's fucked up with me, I can turn to him. And vice versa. He know no matter what the situation is, if he fucked up or anything, he can turn to me. And you don't get that shit often. You know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, hell no, you don't get that. That shit's rare. <clears throat> and so I'm not just going to take that for granted. And so I felt like it would be great for us to have that conversation publicly because I publicly fucked it up. And so because I publicly fucked it up, like that wasn't something like you heard any anybody heard about like, oh, Kevin Durant and Draymond got into it at practice. And because of that, the fucking team is on thin ice, shit all fucked up. Like, that wasn't that. That was in fucking LA, playing at Staples Center, and the world watching, and me and him go at it like one of the biggest arguments that people have seen two teammates have. And I feel like I was on the fucked up end of that. And so I wanted to have that conversation publicly because people publicly saw it. And and they needed to, number one, understand that we are brothers and amongst black men, we can reconcile, we can figure things out, we can talk our problems out and get back to where we need to be, which I think is important for our youth and understanding that. And then I also felt like if he was ready to talk about it, I'm sick of hearing everybody's narrative that was wrong. And the reality is, is I think he was sick and sick of hearing everybody's narrative <clears throat> that was wrong as well. And so I thought, you know, it'll be a good time to do that. Um, it's a sit down between me and him. We don't need anybody else to jump start the conversation. That's just me and my brother chopping it up. And I thought that would be the best way to do it. It's just us two. I, 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 I honestly. <clears throat> And I'm I'm speaking to you as 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 your as your brother now. And forget the basketball aspect of it. as a man, when you can when you can sit down with another man and hash some shit out, some shit that was you know it it was it was embarrassing from you know from to the world <clears throat> you know publicly it was embarrassing. I'm sure it was embarrassing for you. It was embarrassing for him. Y'all ain't never want to have to go through that. But y'all couldn't control that in the heat of of, of that moment. And it went where it went at. I'm just my point is saying that is I'm just glad y'all was able to sit down and talk it out as men and as brothers. Forget basketball players because ego and pride is a motherfucker as we are as we all know that. And K could have been K could have been like man I, I'm not I'm not talking to him like I I'm done with him and you you know what I'm saying and after a while you'd have been saying the same thing after a while like I don't keep trying to talk to this man like I ain't. I'm cool on right. that. So to see y'all, you know, trying to settle those differences, man, I I appreciate that as 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 both of y'all friends, as both of y'all brothers to be able to hash to be able to hash that out. I appreciate it, bro. This episode of What's in Your Glass is once again brought to you by our friends at Freshly. You know about them if you're a listener of this show. And we're here to talk about them once again. Dinner time can be chaotic, but with Freshly, it's easy. Their chefs take care of your meals a few nights a week and take the pressure off you. Freshly offers chef-made, nutrient-packed, delicious meals delivered fresh to your door. No cooking required. Grocery shopping and cooking can be a pain, especially right now. And with Freshly, you don't have to. 
Your meals arrive cooked and fresh every week, so you can keep your fridge stocked and skip the trip to the store. Ordering is easy. Visit Freshly.com and choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better-for-you meals like steak peppercorn, sausage baked penne, or their chicken pesto bowl. Freshly can fit your lifestyle with a variety of plans and meals to pick from that that work for your dietary needs, preferences, tastes, and family size. And now, my listeners can try Freshly for just $6.16 per meal. Stop searching the internet for healthy food near me every night and start living life freshly. Your meals are always delivered fresh, never frozen, and are ready to eat and enjoy in just three minutes. With new meals added each week, Freshly brings the convenience of chef-made, nutritionist-designed classics right to your kitchen. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash glass. Stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash glass for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com slash glass for $40 off your first two orders. And much like KD, we all we know we all know, you know, Trey Trey Pound is is a social media darling, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 very active on on social media, right? Like I I saw you calling out uh, some some folks who were having to laugh after the the France loss, right? Do mm-hmm. do and media at that. Do you do you enjoy calling media folks out on, on just they bad takes or they 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 wrong narratives, uh, you know just their their wrong assessment a lot of times on on things that they really don't know the true essence of. Absolutely, and I think um, I think the reason I love to call the media out on their wrong takes and on uh, the things that they say, or you know the narratives that they try to drive, I love to call them out because the moment we do something wrong, uh, the moment that we, if, if you come out and you say, I'm guaranteeing this win and you lose, they are going to play your sound bite <laughs> over and over and over and over again. If you come out, you do anything wrong, they are going to hammer at that over and over again. But they can say anything and no one holds them accountable. I mean, like, you can literally go on TV, on TNT, on ES, whatever, and be dead-ass wrong. <laughs> and then you just go back tomorrow and talk about something else. Like, that is, like, that's the, some of the backwards, the most backwards shit to me, is you can be dead-ass wrong, and there's no one holding you accountable. That's bullshit, because as someone who is now dabbling on that side as well and doing some some things on the media side the moment i said something wrong everybody was on my ass <laughs> that's a fact but <laughs> like everybody was on my ass the moment i said something wrong <laughs> but everybody can just say what they want to say about us and no one holds them accountable i'm like no hell no because everybody get mad when guys just start talking and say you sensitive you know you sensitive you can't take this but the moment you call their ass out but being wrong about something, they get real sensitive. And I enjoy seeing shit from that side. Like, no, you should, you you should also feel know how that feels. Like you're not, like you 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 got this platform, great. I ain't arguing with nobody's platform. If you own that platform, you did something to deserve to be on that platform. Kudos to you. Much respect. Just like I did something to deserve to be on my platform. All right, cool. If you want me to know how I feel when I fuck up and I do something wrong, you're going to make sure I know. So, all right, bet. I'm going to make sure you know how that shit feels. And it's all good. It's no love lost. It's all love. But if you're going to say shit that's just wrong, you got to stand on that word. You that's can't a fact. just be running running around talking. No, you got you to gotta stand on that word with me. Yeah, because you're creating, you creating a narrative that ain't true. And that, that narrative is perception at the end of the day, especially when it comes to us. So whatever you whatever you writing, whatever you saying, people, your following is listening. And your following Absolutely. is spreading out to their following and so on and so on. So at the end of the day, man, I that that should be funny to me because I you I, I already know I already know what it's like at the end of the day. So it, it but keep us staying on that. I, I saw you I, I saw you also claimed uh your, your spot on the all wash team, right? Alongside <laughs> alongside yeah. Ron. For you for you personally like what what value do you see in in being like 
just real and authentic. You know what I'm saying? And and, and but real and playful on on this, on social. Well, I think uh, I think it's important for people to know uh, number one that we are human because you know people expect you to be superhuman in every aspect uh, and and do all of these things that they don't expect normal and I say that with quotes, normal people to be. But the moment you start acting not normal, then it's a problem. You know, and so I think it's very important for people uh, to see the human side of you, to see like, you know, everybody think like, man, Draymond Green is this asshole. Like, nah, Draymond Green wanted to play more than just about anybody you know. That's a but fact. because you see me on the court, you just think I'm that same guy that I am on the court. And that's not true. You know what I'm saying? But so with the social thing, I try to I try to stay real to who I am because one thing I figured out over, you know, and me coming in this league, I think, you know, and coming in as a second round pick, but to get to where I've gotten, like I had to have a certain nastiness to me to do that, you know. And in in doing that, not only do you get the wrong uh, perception from the media, but you also get the wrong perception from some of your peers. You know what I'm saying? And they may, because they, and on a team, like you on a different team, you don't know. Me. And now as you're, you know, as you, you're in the league longer and you go to things like USA basketball is on a select team and then I get to hang around you and you're like, damn, this, this young dude really cool. I thought he was this, but now that I'm around him, I see. But you don't always, like that, it's, it just doesn't always go like that, and just coming into it, and so what I realized in going through all of that is there was times where I felt like I wasn't being me, and I could be having the success, I could be making as much money as I had to made up to that point, all of these things, but that shit just didn't feel good. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it didn't feel like. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like, oh, great. That's dope. That's dope. Cool, cool. But then the inside, that shit just feel like, yeah, I'm, st- I'm just not being me, though. And if, if I'm not being me, it's not fun. Right. And so I approach social media like that. I approach the media like that. I approach, like, no, I'm going to stay super true to who I am. I've always been a back against the wall type guy. Y'all, everybody had been talking shit like I'm watching. <laughs> like, like I just can't hoop no more. So Trust me, I, do, like, I know the same <laughs> shit. Don't worry about it. I know the same shit. So don't, you already know you already know that. But let me so this, this is my last question I'm gonna ask you from a basketball standpoint on on a basketball topic. Cause you just you just mentioned something. You said a lot of times you might have a perception uh based off of somebody else's narrative on the individual, on the, in our sense a player. But when you go to the USA team and the Olympic team, you be like, oh, damn, now nah, you ain't even, nah, you f- fuck what they talking about. You ain't like that. You know, you get a different, you get a different experience and perception. Who was the one player that you can say, without, without going in, in depth about it, who was the one player that you can say, I didn't know this about you or I thought this about you based on what I heard, but being with you, it changed my whole perception about you. I'm going to tell you the, the three players that was for um, you. <laughs> Bron, Bron, I did be like, you just see Bron on TV, and right. as a low level dude in the league, and I would say low level with, as someone who was really at that level, started for, and just really came up as a second round pick. You don't really get to interact with y'all right, like that right. unless you have a prior relationship, unless you with one of your big homies is cool. Like, it just ain't like that. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? You got to earn your way into that room. That's just what it is. You got to earn your seat at that table. And and so for me, especially coming in as reckless as I came into the league to just try to make my mark, it was you, it was Bron, and it was Russ. Mm. And even with Russ, Russ, it, it even went further because then KD came to the Warriors and it was that whole thing. You know what I'm saying? But it was... It was y'all three for me. And then, obviously, I got to know Bron first um, through 
through several connective tissue relationships and, and built our own separate relationship. And then I got to know you and coming to coming to the USA stuff. And like, I remember I was on a select team and, and you took me to your room. Absolutely. Like, I'm like, damn, like, Mel, cool as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a big moment for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm just finished my second year, I think. Like, still wondering, like, damn, can I make it? And then you took me up to your room. Like, you had this big-ass room in Vegas. I couldn't fathom having a big-ass room like that at, at the point I was at in my career. Like, I remember all of that shit. And then Russ, over the last couple of years, I've just gotten to know him better. And, like, I see why people, why people's perception of me is what the way it is. Because here I am, even at a different level than most people who who have a perception of us, I'm in the same league as y'all, and yet I had a perception of y'all that it's not true. You know what right. I'm saying? So I understand it. But because I was able to build a relationship with all of y'all and get to see what type of guys y'all really are, people just need to be very careful who you judge and the oh, way you sure. judge them and why you judge them that way because that shit really be fluff. Like, who you are as a competitor. And, and one of the things I picked up, on, like, oh, yeah, it's cool for me to compete the way I compete and play the way I play and like it's all good like it's, it's no harm no no foul I'm still me off the court and, and I learned that from watching the way y'all move which was big for me yeah because well, I mean we we had to do it I mean we 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 had to I mean especially for me like I always felt like <clears throat> I gotta be as real as I, I gotta be as real and authentic as possible you know what I'm saying like just because I am who I am, I'm, I, I like I gotta show love to everybody. Like it don't even matter if you the fifteenth man, if you the, the water boy, and you the star. Like I gotta show love to everybody because to that to your point, you never know what's gonna happen. Like you never know how that's gonna come back, and I I never knew that. Like you telling me this story years later, I never I never knew that. So to anybody who's listening out there, never judge a book by his by his cover, and I, I I'll, I'll say that. On on on. Let's let's switch gears a, a one more time, man. Um, off court, uh, I, w- I want to hit on kind of just some of the questions that we don't always love to think about, right? Life after basketball. Um, as, as someone who clearly has a knack for media, you you have a knack for it. I, I take my hat off to you for that. Thank I, you. I, I tell I tell somebody I tell people all the time when you done you good. Like you, <laughs> we already we already, we already know where you going at. Uh, is, 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 is that is that a place where you where, where you see yourself one day when 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 you're done giving everything you got to the game? Thank you. Uh, first off, uh, and yes, I think that's definitely something that I want to do. Um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think there will be several things that I'm doing. As you know, uh, we're in a couple companies together, but like I do a lot of stuff around like outside of the game of basketball but and so i'm not sure how much of that stuff i'll end up doing once i'm done playing like will i go further into that but what i do know is i definitely want to do some of the media stuff as well because i enjoy it um it's a way to stay around the game and not be right in it when i'm done playing you know i always tell people like so they like you should coach you should be a gm like, I'm not sure I want to be on a basketball schedule when I'm done playing <laughs> basketball. I've been on a basketball schedule my whole life. That shit brutal, man. It's brutal. It's, it's brutal. brutal. It's brutal. And so I think that'll definitely be something that I do. Uh, it'll it'll represent a piece of what I do, but it won't be just that. But it, but I'm, I'm very interested and I love to do it. And the reason I really, truly love to do it is because I think when I – as a as a student of the game, as somebody who just thoroughly enjoy the game of basketball, who's always trying to learn the game of basketball, I don't feel like there's any shows that I can truly turn on the TV and learn about the game of basketball. And because of that and because of my love for the game of basketball, <clears throat> I always say basketball is a beautiful sport. It's, 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 it's just a beautiful thing. Basketball is a thing of beauty. But it's very delicate, and if not handled, if, if handled incorrectly, it's, it can 
quickly become a disaster. For and sure. what I mean by that is if you look at our game, even if you look at like young guys coming into the league, like young guys coming to the league skilled and talented and shit. But 95% of them come into the league not knowing a damn thing. You know, and and I think that's in part due to our game is handled incorrectly. You know, it's not it's not handled the way it's uh, such a beautiful, delicate thing should be handled. You know, you should be teaching the game of basketball. You should be teaching these young boys how to act and carry themselves. There's so many things, but it's, in my case specifically, teaching the game of basketball. And so when I'm up there talking and I'm doing, you know, I've done inside the NBA and all of these things with TNT, when I'm doing those things, I am hoping that someone is watching me speak and learning about the game. Because one thing I hate as a basketball fan, as a student of the game, is the only thing I can turn on TV and find is like controversy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, this dude said this. Oh, this person was spotted doing this. This like, And I can't turn on the TV and learn about the game of basketball. And I still think I have a ton to learn. So if I'm watching something in regards to basketball, I'd much rather be something teaching me the game as opposed to telling me the latest he say, she say. Facts. Any, 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 any other off court endeavors like that you know you're you're really into at the moment. Um, we 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 all have so much going on. Like what what's been occupying your energy and your time right now? So I've been doing a. Um, I am also working on a couple uh, a couple shows um one is a show that i'm working on called sessions and it's like it's an interesting twist it's like me taking a deeper dive into myself uh like going through this meditation uh with a couple gurus and like different things i've never meditated a day before in my life until i started recording this show like i have like like I, I can't fucking meditate. Like, uh, like I can't sit still that long and be quiet. Like that's not me. And so, um, like I'm working on that show in which I'll I'm doing the first episode, a pilot episode, and then I'll be an EP on the show. Um, which, so I'm building that on the TV side. I'm also working on another show, um, based around Dominoes with Spring Hill and. I love playing dominoes. I think I I have a huge goal of where I want to see dominoes go. I think it's one of those things that it's a great game and it's very and it's a very like you have to really understand and be calculated when playing dominoes. And some of the best dominoes players in the world are actually in prison or just came home from prison or did a bit. And I also think that is a if we can grow the game with dominoes, that is a route for guys that's been in prison to come back into the world, to have something that they're great at to go and do. And so I'm working on a domino show to play dominoes, talk about dominoes, talk about things, but also just to build that game up because I think that's something that can be used, especially – in our culture. Um, I think that's something that can be used as a positive and can one day generate riches and wealth for people if built up the right way. So I'm working on that as well. Those are the couple, and then also chips. Um, those are the few things that's been taking up a bunch of my time outside of basketball. Well, that's a lot of shit. That's, that's three, that's three different shows at, at the end of the day, but they all, they are meaningful show. You're talking about, you know, sitting still, meditating then you you know then, then you talking about chips which is you know which is that that's real you know authentic conversation one-on-one -on -one. you know getting to the bottom of shit and, and bringing things to the to the to the forefront so you 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 have you know this plethora of of shows that that, that you're working on so something gonna work <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> something gotta work. <laughs> some, 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 one of those, one of those gotta work, man. But I, I just want to say, like, I'm, I'm proud. Of, I'm proud to see you like stepping out of it and doing those things. You know what I'm saying? And, like giving back, like you said, you never. I meditate. You know what I'm saying? Like you, like you say you never meditated in your life. I hated it. 
I hated meditation. I couldn't sit. I couldn't like turn my mind off and focus for more than three minutes. You know what I'm saying? But the more you work mm-hmm. at it, the more you work at it, man. You, you I, I sit there now, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and meditate. But it's a great feeling when you when you come back and out of it. So I, you might have to throw me on there one day, champ. Maybe I'll, I'll hey. give you, I'll give you seven minutes on the show. I, I you know what I mean? I'll give you- <laughs> <laughs> but we gonna we gonna we, we gonna bring this episode to a close, man. But before we bring before we close it, um, we gonna bring it all back to kind of what's in your glass. And so I I got a few quick fire questions for you uh, to close out. Uh, myself and the people, we we have to know. I do this on every episode. We have to know what's in your glass on on special occasions. Um, it I, I like to say it don't have to be nothing label specifically, but what's your go to when you on a beach vacation uh, with your family? Uh, when I'm on a beach and vacation with my family, Whispering Angel. Okay, all right, okay, okay. You going with the little rose? All right. Uh, and now uh, when I when I, I then I flip the page into some margaritas and some tequila shots for Whispering Angel rose. Okay, so after after the Whispering Angel, then you go to margaritas and tequila. What's next after that? Because you you only go up after that. Uh I'll go from Rosé, the Whispering Angel. I go to some margaritas, and then I'm going Lobos after that. I used to go other tequilas, but now I just go Lobos. And shit, Lobos spend my night, champ. Oh yeah, yeah. No, listen. Let me tell you one thing about Lobos. <laughs> <laughs> Lobos going Lobos gonna end your night early. I'm just gonna let you know that. Shout out to Lobos, but they gonna end your night early. What what's uh if you if you out to dinner? For a date at a nice restaurant, what you going? What you grabbing? What's in your glass? Uh, for the most part, I'm gonna go burgundy. Uh, my fiance, her, her, she, she loves Tuscany um, wine. She's not a big wine person. Super Tuscan. She, She's super Tuscan. She, yeah, she okay. loves super Tuscan. And then okay. her favorite, her go to, like, she know nothing, right? So I'll go super Tuscan, and she'll love them. But her favorite go to is Tignanello. Okay. That's not a bad go to though. For for somebody who don't for somebody you claim it don't know nothing. That's not a bad go to. <laughs> so that's her go to. So if, if I'm at dinner with her, I'll and, and it's just me and her drinking, I'll go Tuscany. But if I'm like with the guys or if I'm drinking with, you know, people that really enjoy wine, I love burgundy. Okay. Like, we we know that. I, we we know that. We know that. I absolutely know that. love burgundy. You were you were okay, I got one for you. You were celebrating uh, Smile Direct's IPO. Well, well, by the way, that was big. Like that, that was that was big. And for you, yes, for sir. you guys Thank who you. don't know, Draymond is an investor and a company IPO in uh, 2019. I want to get that right. Yes, sir. So what? Yes, sir. What? What you celebrating on, on that IPO? DRC. Mm. DRC. And I made some good money on that IPO. Uh, well, we know, we know. So DRC, you could you could you could crack a couple bottles of DRC off of that off of that IPO. In in New York City, a couple bottles of DRC. Got to do it right. I like that. One more. If you were, if you were celebrating, you you were celebrating the 2015 Warriors Championship. I I probably was drinking Patron at that time. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. drinking for drone. No, no, but uh, no. Matter of fact, you don't know what I was drinking when we won in 2015. And my uh, my my infamous uh, note, yeah, I was drinking Hennessy. That's what I was drinking in 2015. Final celebrating on the float. I drank a whole bottle of Hennessy. And that led to my interview. I ain't never, I ain't never admitted to people I was drunk on that interview. They just assumed it. But here it is. I was, I had just downed the bottle of Hennessy. But there you have it. There you have it. That's the Henny for the championship. Yo, Draymond, man, I just want to say thank you, man. I'm going to grab my glass. Thank you so much for joining me for a glass. Um, And best of luck with everything you have going on. Uh, and, And thank you to the audience tuning in this week. Uh, please follow, rate, review What's in Your Glass on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever you listen to your podcast. You can also check out the video releases each week on YouTube. Day Day, I appreciate you, champ. As always, love. love Congratulations buddy. on the goal. Good luck this season. 
I'll be seeing you, you know, four four times a year this year. We I think we opened up with y'all this year. So Yes, sir. Let man, it's, I, I think this gonna be a great season for us, for y'all, and just for the league as a whole, man. I I haven't felt this much excitement uh around the NBA in so long and so many years. But this year you can feel excitement, you know, a, across the whole NBA, not just with a couple mm -hmm. teams. So I just wanna say congratulations. Thank you, my brother. Cheers to some DRC. Cheers yes, to some, some Burgundy, and I'm sure I'll see you soon, champ. Peace. No doubt. Cheers. Thanks Love, for having baby. me, bro.